Thanks for coming this evening. Um, we're so honored to have Ethan here with us at Berkeley Art Museum, and so thankful for all of you showing up. Um, I thought, my name is Lucasa. Um, I program out of the art lab, which is just around the corner, um, and program workshops and events. Um, and in lieu of this week, um, I thought that we would start off this evening with um, a, written, a new written piece called Wash Your Hands by Dory Midnight. We are humans relearning to wash our hands. Washing our hands is an act of love. Washing our hands is an act of care. Washing our hands is an act that puts the hypervigilant body at ease. Washing our hands helps us return to ourselves by washing away what does not serve. Wash your hands like you are washing the only teacup left that your great-grandmother carried across the ocean. Like you are washing the hair of a beloved who is dying. Like you are washing the feet of Grace Lee Boggs, Beyonce, Jesus, your auntie, Audrey Lord, Mary Oliver, you get the picture. Like this water is poured from a jug your best friend just carried for three miles from the spring they had to climb a mountain to reach. Like water is a precious resource made from time and miracle. Wash your hands and cough into your elbow, they say. Rest more, stay home, drink water, have some soup, they say. To which I would add, burn some plants your ancestors burned when, they were, when there was fear in the air. Boil some aromatic leaves in a pot on your stove until your windows steam up. Open your windows, eat a piece of garlic every day, tie a clove around your neck, breathe. My friends, it is always true, these things. It has already been time. It is always true that we should move with care and intention, asking, do you want to bump elbows instead with everyone we meet? It is always true that people are living with one lung, with immune systems that don't work so well, or perhaps work too hard, fighting against themselves. It is already true that people are hoarding the things that the most vulnerable need. It is already time that we might want to fly on airplanes less and not go to work when we are sick. It is already time that we might want to know who in our neighborhood has cancer, who has a new baby, who is old with children in other state, who has extra water, who has a root cellar, who is a nurse, who has a garden full of echel campaign and nettles. It is already time that temporarily non-disabled people think about living about people living with chronic illness and disabled folks, that young people think about old people. It is already time to stop using synthetic fragrances, to not smell like bodies, to pretend like we're, not, we're all not dying. It is already time to remember that those scents make so many of us sick. It is already time to not take it personally when someone doesn't want to hug you. It is already time to slow down and feel how sacred we are. We are already afraid. We are already living in the time of fires when fear arises, and it will. Let it wash over your whole body instead of staying curled up tight in your shoulders. If your heart tightens, contract and expand. Science says compassion strengthens the immune system. We already know that, but capitalism gives us amnesia and tricks us into thinking it's the thing that protects us. But it's the way we hold the thing, the way we do the thing. Those of us who have forgotten amuletic tradi traditions, we turn to hoarding hand sanitizer and masks. We find someone to blame. We think that that will help. Want to blame something? Blame capitalism. Blame the patriarchy. Blame white supremacy. It is already time to remember to hang garlic on our doors, to dip our handkerchie handkerchiefs in thyme tea, to rub salt on our feet, to pray the rosary, kiss the mezuha, clean with the eggs. In the middle of the night, when you wake up with terror in your belly, it is time to think about stardust and geological time, redwoods and dance parties and mushrooms. 
It is time to care for one another, to pray over water, to wash away fear every time we wash our hands. And with that, I want to introduce Ethan Philbrick, who is a composer, cellist, and writer based in Brooklyn. He holds a PhD in performance studies from New York University and has presented work in New York at Abrams Art Center, Brick, the Gray Art Gallery, The Kitchen, MoMA PS1, NYU Skirball, and the Sculpture Center. He is currently a visiting assistant professor of theater and performance studies at Molenberg College. Please help me welcome Ethan. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you for coming and braving our mutual communicability. Thank you for coming here today and braving our mutual communicability. And by communicability, I of course mean of both meaning and disease. And by communicability, I of course mean of both meaning and disease. In 1957, Frank O'Hara wrote the book of poems. Meditations in an emergency. Meditations in an emergency. Meditations in an emergency. And what's going to happen for the next 45 minutes is my version of that book. Because whiteness is an emergency. Capitalism is an emergency. Electoral politics are an emergency. Electability is an emergency. Moderate liberals are an emergency. The university is an emergency. Health care for profit is an emergency. So thank you for coming. Meditations in an emergency. Meditations in an emergency. So to start us off, what I'd love to have happen is, um, can I get a little bit more on the vocal mic, Justine? Thanks. Um, is we're going to read the text from Frank O'Hara's Meditations in Emergency that I'm going to be working with over the next span of time. So you have them in your hands. Um, and so how I'd like to do this is we'll just start on the first page with the first fragment. There are 10 fragments. We'll start on the first page. And if you feel called to read it, I'd just like for you to stand up and read it. If you stand up and you see somebody else is standing too, just like check in and then read it together. Okay, and so we'll do that with the first page. We'll go on to the second page, do that with the second page, go on to the third page till we get to the end of it, okay? So let's begin. Thank you. Okay, let's start the second track. Thank you. 
all decide again and again whom we love in times of crisis we must all decide again and again whom we love in times of crisis all the side again and again whom we love in times of crisis we must all the side again and again whom we love in times of crisis we must all the side again and again whom we love, whom we love, whom we love, whom we love. So now, I'd like to invite five to ten people to come and lie down on this floor with me. It involves absolutely nothing else than that. You don't have to touch anybody. You don't have to do anything. I just need five to ten more people to come be like I am here now. You don't have to be close to me. You don't have to be close to anyone else.
but you get to have a little moment of horizontality. You get to see what this ceiling is doing. You get a wonderful view of Edie's work over here. Okay, and then once you're here, take a second to pay attention to what it feels like on the inside of your heels. See if you can feel inside the ball of your foot. What does your marrow feel like in there? What does the wet gunk on the inside of bone feel like today? And then also get a sense of what the space between your neck and the floor feels like. And try to feel both the inside of the ball of your foot and the space between your neck and the floor at the same time. And then once you have those two spots held in your awareness, go into the middle of your pelvis. Like feel your asshole and then go inside your body a little bit from there. And see if you can just let whatever's happening in there melt a little bit. So there's just a little bit of melting right in the center of your pelvis. And now with this sense of the inside of the ball of your foot, the space between your neck and the floor, and the little melt on the inside of your pelvis, start to pay attention to your breath. What's it doing? How's your body responding to it? And now, imagine that with each inhale, you can think of something that you've lost. An idea, an object, a person. Each inhale, you think of something that you lost. And each exhale, you think of it as a little object that you can place inside your lungs somewhere. See if what happens if you try to do that with each breath, filling your lungs with little objects. Like someone always losing never knowing why like someone always losing something and never knowing why like someone always losing something and never knowing why like someone always losing something and never knowing what like someone always losing something and never knowing what like someone always losing something and never knowing what like someone always losing something and never knowing what and never knowing what and never knowing like someone always losing and never knowing like someone always losing and never knowing losing and never knowing losing and never knowing losing trying to have something but then losing it before you have it trying to know something but then losing it before you know it always losing never knowing always losing never knowing like someone always losing something and never knowing what like someone always losing something and never knowing what like someone always losing something and never knowing what
And now for my people who are lying on the ground, if we could just roll onto one side and slowly get onto hands and knees. And then slowly crawl back to our seats.
open flesh, the open, the open, the open, the open, the open, the open, the open flesh of the world, the open flesh of the world, the open flesh of the world, the open flesh, the open flesh, the open flesh, the open flesh of the world, the open flesh of the world, the open, 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 the open flesh of the world, the flesh, the flesh, the flesh of the world, the open flesh of the world, the open flesh of the world, the open, the open, the open, the open, the open flesh of the world, the open flesh of the world, the open flesh of the world, the open flesh, the open flesh, the open flesh of the world, the open flesh of the world, the open flesh, the open flesh, the open, 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 the open flesh, the open flesh of the world, the world of the world, the open flesh, the open flesh of the world, the open flesh of the world, the open, the open, the open, the open flesh of the world, the open flesh of the world, the open flesh of the world, the open, the open, the open flesh of the world, the open flesh of the world, the open, the open, the open, the open, the open flesh of the world, the open flesh of the world, the open flesh of the world, the open, the open, the open flesh of the world. So now, um, it's time for the, the sing-along portion. So, um, if you're, there are going to be two parts, and I'm going to teach them. So if you're someone for whom singing brings you pleasure, this could be a great moment for you. If you're someone who it's like, no, I don't want to join your sing-along, that's great. Um, please refuse and hang out, you know? Um, so this is a great time to say no. It's a great time to practice saying no. Um, so there are two parts. Both are, neither are very low. So if you're a low voice person, this one's not for you. But the first part is a little lower. It's a little lawyer. <laughs> this first part's a little for the lawyers out there. No, um, it's not. Um, no, maybe it is. I don't know. Um, okay, so the first part's a little lower. Um, and it goes like this. So I'll just sing it, and I'm going to keep repeating it. And once you have it, join in. I could never be a boy. I could never be a boy. I could never be a boy. Join in if you know it. I could never be a boy. Keep going. Beautiful. Keep going. Here's the second part. I could never be a boy. I could never be a boy. I could never be a boy. Keep going. Beautiful, a little louder. One 
one last time, a little quieter. I could never be a boy. So the title of Frank O'Hara's book that I'm working with today, Meditations in an Emergency, it um, is actually a riff on a 17th century text by John Donne. Um, and that book was called, Medi uh, no, Devotions Upon Emergent Occasions. Um, and so that book is mostly, it's like a series of meditations or devotions, prayers on um, sickness and death. Um, but there's this one passage from it that's become very famous, and it's this little passage that maybe some of you know. It gets quoted a lot. No man is an island entire to himself. Each is a piece of the main, a part of the content. I don't know, something like that. Um, and that passage has always um, felt a little strange to me because I grew up on a literal island, and so I sort of like, but what happens if you, you're, in your childhood you like felt like an island? <laughs> um, but will you start the third track, Justine? Thanks. Um, but so, um, I was thinking about that passage, and then I was thinking about being here with you today, and today is my um, grandfather's 91st birthday, um, and he was a literature professor and has been rereading Proust this year and taught me to play the flute when I was a little kid, and um, so I thought of that passage and I wrote to him and I said, could I ask you to record this for me? Um, and he said yes. Um, and so he figured out how to record it on his own. He sent me a file and here it is. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in their coming. Therefore, never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls to the moon.
I become the sea. In love with your speed, your heaviness, your breath. I become the sea. In love with your speed, your heaviness, your I become the sea in love with your speed, your heaviness, your So now I'd like us each to think of um, a person who passed before we had a chance to tell them how much they or their work um, meant to us. So think of someone you missed, someone who is gone before you had a chance to say, hey, can we like, go get coffee and I can just tell you how much I think your work is so inspiring and incredible or just how much I've been inspired by you in general. So think of that person. Who did you miss? Who have you missed? And then if it's helpful, close your eyes. But, and just imagine them here now actually just right over your right shoulder. And they're sitting behind you and they're actually leaning forward. So their mouth is just behind your right earlobe. And they're just there and you can feel them breathing. And it's moving your hair a little bit. You feel the sort of wetness of their breath. And feel them there for the next couple minutes. Stammering a little in the ground. 
I am this dead man's voice Stammering a little in the ground I am this dead man's voice Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. 